Hi, and welcome to another edition of the ECW podcast. I'm your host, Brian Saul, and with me today is Chris Bone, who is the IT and HIT manager of Wesley Community and Health Centers in sunny Phoenix, Arizona. Um, that's a FQHC with approximately 13 providers, and this podcast is part of a series of podcasts that we are hosting in honor of uh, Health Center Week. Chris, thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate your time. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, let's just jump right in and start our discussion on one of the most popular terms that you hear being bandied about in medicine these days, and that is SDOH or social determinants of health. Would you be able to give us a brief overview of what SDOH is and why it's so important to community health centers? Sure. Social determinants of health, or we, always, we usually say SDOH, um, it's a term used to identify environmental factors that could affect a patient's overall health. For example, if they're without a job or a home or they lack access to healthy food or enough food. This is very important to FQHCs because a moderate percentage of our patient populations are at risk for one or many of those factors. When we had spoken a little bit earlier, you had alluded to the fact that you felt your practice was, um, I believe you used the term, a little behind the curve uh, last year. Um, can you expand on that as well? So screening for SDOH factors has been out in the FQHC industry for a few years now, but implementing the screening is challenging because once you identify the need, how are you going to assist the patient with their needs? This delays implementing the screenings in many cases, and I believe in our case as well. Oh, so then essentially the primary difficulty seemed to be in connecting patients with necessary services. Um, what steps did you take in the meantime to connect patients with those uh, services is in, in an easy and effective way? Wesley has many medical students. And one of the projects was related to SDOH back in the spring of 2020, kind of right when the, you know, the pandemic started. Mm -hmm. And um, they did ask a few of the SDOH questions, but not all of them from the prepare um, sheet or questionnaire. The prepare form, and yeah. So, right. They didn't, and they didn't ask all of those questions. And because of the way that they built it, how they were documenting it, it wasn't easily pulled out of ECW either. So basically when I came in, you know, my prior experience um, with another health center and with ECW, I knew that the BH, the Behavioral Health Smart Form Bundle had the prepare smart Pre form. Yeah, plus the prepare form, yeah. Exactly, plus a bunch of other smart forms that we needed for behavioral health as well. And so with Wesley's leadership approval, we were able to implement the prepare smart form at the beginning of this year, 2021. And alongside um, getting that going, we were also working on getting Aunt Bertha implemented and using their platform to match patient needs with community-based resources. Aunt Bertha, fascinating. Um, for those of you who are not aware of what Aunt Bertha is, um, Chris, could you give us just a brief overview of, uh, of what Aunt Bertha actually is and does? Sure. Um, part of this is from their website and part of it is uh, just my experience with them. Sure. Aunt Bertha is the leading referral platform for social services in America, serving the biggest cities and the smallest towns. They connect people seeking help and the verified social care providers that serve them with dignity and ease, making it easy for people to find social services in their community for nonprofits to coordinate their efforts and for organizations to integrate social care into the work they already do. And so Aunt Bertha offers clinics across the US and it doesn't have to be an FQHC, it could be any doctor office um, mm -hmm. in the US, the opportunity to subscribe to their network and that includes the ability to create and follow up on referrals for patients to the various CBOs, the community-based organizations and thus that provides a means to measure and close the loop on those referrals. So essentially it's an online resource that helps, uh, helps close the referral loop. So as to make sure that patients get the help that they need. Exactly, uh, so. exactly. Our staff, you know, especially our outreach and enrollment staff 
they were already assisting patients with local resources, but we never had a way to track those referrals nor if the patients received the assistance. And quite frankly, we only knew about the community-based organizations we knew about. Right, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, exactly. That's always the case. Is there any way that screening for SDOH um, and then connecting patients with community referrals can be connected with outcomes? And are payers uh, now becoming involved or interested in the info that you find out um, from tracking SDOH? So we believe that screening for SDOH factors, especially during the pandemic, is crucial to treat the overall health of our patients. If they're already at risk for physical diseases, adding on those social barriers may widen their treatment compliance gap. It's better for our providers mm -hmm. to know these barriers so that they can offer alternatives to the patient for better care and outcomes. And so, I know that payers are starting to ask for this information as well. They're really interested in how that impacts their, their patients. Um, I also know that our HIE in the state of Arizona, Health Current, is expanding to start gathering this SDOH um, referral information. And basically their goal is, you know, for, for everybody in Arizona to know for that patient, you know, they, they were referred for services, um, mm -hmm. for housing, for food, for whatever it was. Right. And, you know, was that, was that referral loop closed? Because the patient could go anywhere. They could go to the hospital ER, they could go to another behavioral health clinic, they could go to another, they could go anywhere. And um, the HIE, that's the power of that. And, and we've, are, we've also got Aunt Bertha working with Health Current so that we don't have extra work to do to get that information to Health Current since we're already going to be, we already have it in Amber. All of this data that you're collecting on SDOH, well, that you've gathered a lot essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, are you using any tools within ECW uh, or elsewhere to, uh, to help you interpret that data? Well, there are, there is a, an EBO package called Prepare. So when you get the Prepare Smart Form, you can request this EBO package and it does have quite a few reports in it. But I have to say that's still a work in progress for us. We're just starting to, you know, make sure that everybody is doing the screening. Um, that's really important. But in saying that, there's a couple of reports that can help us. And um, there's one that's a visit planning report. And so we can um, run that for people who are coming in next week and they don't have a prepare screening done. And so that will help our staff when they're doing their daily huddles to make sure that they're going to screen those patients for prepare. And the other report that I think is going to be very useful is just, you know, how many have we done? Now that you've been using our Bertha for, I, I think you said about a year, to, to put it bluntly, uh, how's it going compared to last year? Well, we, we did just start with Aunt Bertha last fall. Oh, okay. Um, I apologize. And it and no, it's no worries. I um I knew about Aunt Bertha because of past ECW national conferences. Mm -hmm. And from the moment that it was presented at conference, I was like, oh my goodness. And now I was at a previous health center. And I would this is great. This this is an awesome tool to match patients with the the resources that they need. And um so for us at Wesley when we adopted this, it helps us to identify the needs by doing the screenings and match the patients with those needed resources during their visit. And that's expanded our assistance to the patients because prior to that, it would be our O&E staff basically working with patients who called in and, and said, I need help. Right. And so a lot of times, even the patients that were coming in the clinic, we didn't know about their needs um, because we weren't consistently doing the screening. So now with the screenings, we're able to find, we're able to help them and feel, help them feel comfortable as well, um, providing sure. that information so that we can, we can help them and, you know, know that there's no judgment um, mm -hmm. or any of that, that we all need help every once in a while. Could you just give us a brief overview of your workflow on, on how you, how, how you work with the prepare forms and, and then work with our birth, et cetera? Exactly. We, we have, um, we typed up uh, the prepare smart form questions basically 
And we, we have a, an additional two um, food insecurity questions that we ask as well. So we typed those up in English and in Spanish. We laminated them. And so the MAs will give those to the patients after they do their vitals and they, they leave them in the room to wait for the provider. They'll say, please complete this. So they'll come back, they'll get it. They'll go into ECW, they create the smart form, they put all the answers for the patient and then they wipe that off and then it's ready for the next patient that they room. And so it's, it's pretty quick. It's, it's, it's give the patient a little bit of privacy so yeah. they can answer honestly. Now, if there is a positive response, so our provider champion identified three of the items on, because there's a lot, there's a, a many, many questions on that smart form, but she identified three for us to focus on um, at, at the beginning of this project. So that if any of those were positive, then um, the MA will alert the provider and the provider will put in a referral to our outreach staff, um, asking them to, to work with the patient and match up whatever resources they need. Um, and so they can mark those as stat or urgent. And many times we can get the patient in with the O&E staff before they leave the clinic. Is it only your patients that can use or, or provider patients that can use Aunt Bertha? Is it, is it solely set up for um, medical practices? Actually, um, Aunt Bertha in, in its, just in its own platform, anyone can go to, I think it's findhelp.org and they can search for resources. Uh, what we did was we were able to get the Aunt Bertha widget on our what are on our main website. So if anyone visiting our website, WesleyCenterPHX.org, they can anonymous, anonymously search for available resources all on their own in the comfort of their own home. I can't thank you enough for being with us today and, and talking to us about Aunt Bertha and social determinants of health. Uh, it's a fascinating topic, and as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I think it's only going to become more and more important as uh, months and years pass in how we treat our patients uh, moving forward. So again, Chris, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm Brian Saul. I've been your host today. If you'd like to see more uh, of eClinical Works podcasts, you can find them on iTunes, YouTube, and my.eclinicalworks.com. We hope to see you again in the near future. Have a great day and stay safe.